What's going on everyone? Today we're back with part two for calibrating the accelerometer values for your MPU 650. Uh, I'm using MicroPython and my Raspberry Pi Pico W to do this as I explained in the previous video part one which I'm linking in the description below. In this video we'll be focusing on the linear acceleration value so as I mentioned at the end of the last video this will be a little more complicated and in fact it'll be maybe an order of magnitude more complicated than the, the gyroscopic values but thankfully I'm going to make it easy for you guys, and hopefully by the end of this, you'll have a good understanding of how I calibrated the, the AX, AY, AZ values to make a more accurate representation of the acceleration in the sensor. So I'm just going to run this loop I have that's just printing out values from my sensor. It's currently set up and running, and I'm going to show you guys why I want to calibrate the linear accelerations initially. So right now, I have the orientation of my sensor is... Z is parallel to gravity and it's facing upward. So that means Z should be one. So if I go ahead and run the script, you're gonna see that that's not the case, okay? So running the script, we can see AZ is around two. So we can see that this definitely needs some form of calibration because the value should be one. And the reason we wanna calibrate, as I mentioned in the previous video, is because a lot of the times these sensors have an inherent error built into them, especially cheaper sensors like the MPU650. So we'll be going through how to do the calibration of all three of these degrees of freedom. And yeah, let's just jump into the code. So actually, before I get into the code, I'm just going to explain what I'm trying to do in the code at a high level. And you'll see why this is more complicated than the previous video after I explain all this. But pretty much for each access, first of all, we have to calibrate three times. As opposed to before, we only ran one calibration and each access had a constant value. And the reason this happens is because at specific orientations, the offset is going to be different. So if I'm taking the z-axis and I'm pointing it upwards against gravity, I'm going to calculate a bunch of offsets, a bunch of points. And then if I do the same thing downwards, I'm going to get different offsets than I had before. And if I do the same thing to the right, I'm going to get different offsets. And the best way to capture this variance in the offsets, depending on the orientation of the axis, is actually to use a linear line as opposed to a constant value. So the premise of what I'm trying to do in this video is I'm trying to calculate lines. I'm trying to calculate the y value and the b value in the equation uh, y equals mx plus b. Or sorry, the, the, the m value and the b value and y equals mx plus b. So we're trying to calculate a line as opposed to a constant value. And that makes the problem just a little more complicated. And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll see that it makes a lot more sense. And it's, it's straightforward after going through the content of this video. I just want to thank this guy, whoever wrote this online, because it's a really good description of how to approach this process. And I kind of based my, my calculations off what he did. So I just want to thank him, and I'm going to link this in the description below. But to better show what I'm going to be doing for each axis is I'm going to be calculating offsets for each orientation, as you guys saw in the previous video. So we're going to do three orientations per axis. So we're going to have a total of nine calibrations. So it's, it's, a, it's a longer process than we had before. And then, so imagine we start off initially with it pointed upwards like this. And then we're going to calculate some offsets. So going back here, I'm just going to throw some points there as to some hypothetical offsets I'd calculate in that scenario would be along this point would be like this, 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 and this. And now let's say I do the same thing. I flip it over and then I start calibrating for more offsets. So I, I'm trying to find the offsets. And then finally, I do it perpendicularly, and I get some more offsets. Okay, let's see like this. Now, the better representation of this data to get the variance would be to fit a line through all these points using some uh, linear algebra that I'll be linking in the description below, and I'll slightly be going over it in the video. But after we do the linear algebra to get a line of best fit, it's going to look something like this. So let's just draw a line, and then... So this line, if you guys are familiar with algebra, if not, it's okay. I'm going to link some descriptions or some videos in the description below again to, to explain the premise of like a line. So to represent a line on a 2D graph, you need an M value, which is the slope, and the B value, which is the Y intercept. And that's pretty much what we're doing in this video is calculating this line. So enough of that. Let's jump into the code where I do this. Okay, so jumping into the code, which you have all been waiting for. Uh, similar to my previous video on part one, I'm just making a connection to my MPU650 and allowing it to settle. Settling is good practice for initiating your calibration. Just, just let the sensor sit and allow it to settle to stable values. Now going down here, 
we can just see that I'm defining linear calibration in this, in this function, and it's taking two parameters. The first parameter is the calibration time. So the more time you take to calibrate, the more accurate a presentation you get of the calibration values. I'm just setting it as five for the sake of time in this video. And secondly, you can pass the axis you want to calibrate. So I'm just calibrating the z-axis in this video. As I mentioned, there's nine calibrations, but in this video, we're just gonna do three. So we're gonna do the three required for the z-calibration, just to show you like how it would look in the end. And then I describe here the methodology I'm using. I'm using uh, this method in this YouTube video that's uh, actually called linear regression using least squares method. It's a pretty simple way to get a line just using a bunch of points. There's other techniques you can do. I know in Python there's some libraries, but I'm using my MicroPython where I don't have access to line libraries. So if you're using another language or using something that has more support to to store libraries, my, my Raspberry Pi Pico W doesn't have the capability. You can certainly use your own uh, line generating library, but I think this is fine. And if you watch the video as I linked here, you should understand sort of what I'm trying to do and what I'm trying to capture. But yeah, so you just, you pass in this parameters, calibration time, you pa pass in the axis, you can pass in X, AX, AY, AZ. And finally, in the end, you get the M and the B values for Y equals MX plus B. Now, initiating this, we just, have the number of points as zero, and we initialize these values as zero. Now, these are values pertaining to the, the algorithm shown in this video. So if you go over this video, you'll see what I'm trying to do here is I'm, I'm taking some sums, some running sums. And then the first thing this does is we, we start calibrating oriented against gravity upwards. So we do that for five seconds. And then once that's said and done, we flip it downwards and we start orienting downwards against gravity and we start calibrating again. And then third and, and lastly, we start orienting perpendicular to gravity. So after a bunch of math and after a bunch of uh, calibrating time, we're gonna spit out actually M and B, which is the, the numbers you'll need to add to your acceleration values in practice. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm gonna be calibrating the Z and I'm just going to run this. So let's run this code here and see what's going on so you guys can understand what's happening. Okay. So it's telling me it's settling for four seconds, good. So now it's, it's giving me a moment. Orient the X axis upwards against gravity, click when ready. So I'm just gonna do this by hand and orient it as you guys saw in the previous document. So my sensor is flat on the table pretty much and it's th that means z is pointing upwards and i'm just going to try to keep it in that state with my hand just because i don't have a calibration block which is typically what you should use and I'll, I'll link a calibration block in the description below but let's go ahead and click enter and allow this to calibrate so enter so now it's calibrating it's telling me how many points it's taking good good now it's telling me to orient it downwards against gravity so let's do that so now i just flip my sensor over Remember to keep it as steady as you can when this is happening. Try to, your best not to move it, which is why I said a calibration block is ideal because it'll allow you to not have human error. So I did that. I'm keeping my hand steady. And finally, I'm going to orient it perpendicular against gravity. So once again, it gives me the time to do that. So I'm just going to click enter. It's pretty fun. Okay, bam. So it spit out my M and my B value. Now, if those of you guys who are still confused right now are like, what the heck do I use these M and B values for? I'll show you right now. So let's go back to the previous script I showed you at the beginning of the video. Coming back to the script we saw at the beginning of the video, uh, in the previous segment, we just did the AZ calibration and it gave us an M and a B value. Let's go ahead and just delete these guys because we don't really care about them for now. We're just gonna focus on the AZ value. But ideally, you wanna repeat the process for the other accelerate the linear acceleration values and let me just delete these okay so we have this and we said at the beginning of the video that it's it's inaccurate and we saw that right away because it was giving me two when in that scenario it should have given me one g so let's do this so let's see az offset so the line we calculated just now was the offset line and from that line we can get a value if we plug in the acceleration so we have the m value which is this mx plus b, bam. So it's m times x. x in this scenario is actually the acceleration value. 
and then plus b, which is the which is the y-intercept. So this gives me the offset. So now I have the sensor acceleration and the offset. Now I want to subtract the offset from the sensor value. So let's say az with offset equals az minus az offset. Okay. Bam. Now let's go ahead and print that. So let me um, print az. with, let's just say offset, and then, so I'll print them side by side and show you that the AZ with the offset is actually a much better representation of what's going on with acceleration. Let's do that. And then I'm just gonna print between these, forward slash T, I think it was, is that what it was? Okay, so let's go ahead and run this now. Let's go ahead and run this. My sensor is oriented in a way that AZ should be one. In an ideal scenario, it should be around one. And then we'll see the difference between the values. So I'm gonna run this. Bam, bam, bam. Okay, so AZ, it's giving me with no offset inputted is around two, that's wrong. But AZ with the offset that we calculated in the linear acceleration calibration is actually around one. So this is really good news. And then this means that the acceleration you're getting now from your sensor is a much better representation of the actual acceleration that's going on in real life. And you can do these for your other two axes and you should get similar results. And that's pretty much it. So if you went through this whole video and you're still confused, please let me know in the comments down below and I'll be glad to give a detailed description of what you're questioning about. I'll pull all the links that I, that I went through in this video from the, from the linear algebra to, to the calibration technique I used online and I'll also put some other resources down below. I just want to say thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you want to see in the next video and stay tuned.